There's not much that needs to be said about our next angler other than he has taken more money directly out of my wallet on Delta tournaments than any other angler. What's up guys, this is Lorenzo Rossetti here. Just uh, following up with some Delta, Delta patterns for this time of the year, pre-spawn, post-spawn, and uh, give you guys some good tips and tactics to go out and apply this weekend. When, you, when you're out here trying to figure out what's going on with the, with the Delta, there's really only about five baits you need. You need something on top, especially this time of the year, because they're, they're in three different cycles. They're, they're either pre-spawn, and there's still pre-spawn fish out here. They're either in the spawning mode or they're in the post-spawn. Uh, and you, you can catch them in all three water depths. You catch them up in zero to you know, three foot of water. You catch them down three to five. And then you've got fish that are you know, eight to ten to twelve foot that are just kind of laying out here trying to recuperate after uh, spawning and, and getting up there defending the nest and you can catch them at all three depths but you want something that's going to slowly fall down to them like a Senko probably one of the, the most and top producing baits out here on the river uh, and then you want a drop shot something that's a finesse technique you get it out there and, and just shake it around and a lot of times those bigger females that that haven't really you know gone after anything up shallow that you could really get those those finicky females up shallow to, to bite that drop shot light line it just doesn't really impose any any type of uh, you know problem to the fish so they go up there and they, they go after that when they won't go after anything else it's just a, it's a good bait and then you gotta you gotta also remember I think one of the the, the most recognized baits in the last three to five years is probably you got to be the chatter bait or the the bladed jig where you could actually take that bait out there and fish it at every single depth. I mean, you go out there, you fish it zero to two foot of water, you can fish it down three to five foot, or you could drag it on the bottom, work it like a jig, pop it through the vegetation. That's also been a great fish catching uh, strategy out here and technique for a lot of guys. And I know I use it every time out. It's just, it's just a matter of finding out the color and the depth of water they want it and, and whether or not it's catching the, the bigger quality fish. When it, when it comes to fishing the, the bladed jig or the vibrator by Revenge, I, I really like the, the vibrator from Revenge. It's just, they, they've got a great bait, a really strong hook on it. They've got some great colors. I think probably the three main colors that I throw the most are, are just a straight black and red. I think it's called a Black Widow. That, that's a really key bait. And then they make a brown color. I refer to it as, it's called a rat. Uh, it just looks like a, a sewer rat, I guess you can call it, but it's brown. And, and, uh, and the other one is a white one. I really like the white one out here. You know, spinner baits this time of the year are probably one of the top fish catching baits, especially early in the morning when the fish are chasing the fry, chasing the, you know, the small bluegill, crappie, all kinds of different little bait fish and forage on top of the water. Spinner bait is the key to catching those fish early in the morning when they don't want to come up to the top and grab that spook or that frog or, or that wake bait. It's just a great bait this time of the year and it can be fished all day long. So you, you're not just, uh, you know, you can't just fish it in the morning, you can fish it all day long. When the wind blows, it just makes it even better. I have a Revenge, Revenge spinner bait. It's a citrus shad color, it's double willow. I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but it's a tandem willow. You know, you got a nickel and a gold blade. I think it's a four and a, probably a two or two and a half. Uh, but it just works really good this time of the year. It really mimics and emulates those bait fish. You know, the fry, the crappie, the bluegill. When they get up there shallow, you know, this is a tough bait to beat this time of the year. But one thing I do want to stress on this spinner bait is I know a lot of people talk about not using trailer hooks, um, but it's, it's an absolute must. You got to have the trailer hook. It doesn't matter if you're fishing in the toolies, in the wood. Um, I, I've caught several fish over 10 pounds in tournaments on spinner baits on that trailer hook alone. You know, when you see the fry jumping, you're in the right areas. It's it's more to do with with getting the bait in front of active fish because you know I've caught them when you see the fry jumping. I've caught them without the fry jumping. It's just it's just a matter of, of running across those fish that are that are active because I mean as you can see right there they're jumping out of the water. Uh, there's just a lot of activity right here. You have moving water. Again, it's the mouth of a of a major river that feeds into the, the San Joaquin River, and um, it's just a great little spot. I mean anything, because you got to remember, you got to have a top, you got to have a break, you got to have some type of uh, safe harbor for the fish to sit, 
you know, as they're, they're letting the water either come in or out, you've got vegetation, you've got, you've got forage, you've got, I mean, you go down the list, you got to have some place for the fish to actually just be safe. This particular area has, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's a feeder creek, this is Calaveras River, you've got water moving back and forth, you've got a point, it's, it's defined, you have a flat up here around this dock, you know, they can push bait fish up there, feed on them, they can spawn as well, it's a hard bottom, and then you have a, a drop off down to about 10, 12 foot of water. And th this little particular area, you can, you can kind of pattern the fish. Uh, there's always a population here, whether they're pre-spawn, post-spawn, or spawn. You don't have to go too far to, to, to figure out where they're hiding.